Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So recently, I was watching Drew Gooden's latest video where he does a challenge to give up different kinds of screens for a week. And on one of those days, he had to give up Netflix. That actually proved to be one of the easiest ones with him saying this. I'm gonna be honest, I am so out on Netflix at this point. They make one million shows every year, most of them are awful, and even the ones that aren't get canceled after two seasons. What makes you think I'm gonna take the time to get invested in a show if there's only like a 5% chance they'll even get to finish making it? I don't trust you anymore, dude. Also, I'll say it, I'm tired of the binge model, okay? I like weekly releases. And I definitely found I could relate. In fact, it's kind of a sentiment that I found more and more of online with Netflix these past few years. Honestly though, when I first started hearing people complain about this a lot, I didn't pay much attention to it, because it didn't feel like anything new. I've been around long enough to remember when sci-fi fans constantly complained about Fox, the network that killed The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr., Firefly, Terminator of the Sarah Connor Chronicles, and so many more. But really, like, all the networks canceled stuff. It's just that sci-fi fans tended to be a lot more passionate on the internet than, say, fans of CBS's Kitchen Confidential. People complained, but at the end of the day, it didn't feel like it did any huge lasting damage to those channels. But with Netflix, something seems different. And that's what I want to tackle this week, why Netflix cancellations may really impact them in the long term in a way that's kind of unprecedented in the history of TV, and maybe even some ideas for what they could change to get out of this now decade-long cycle. It may be hard for people to remember this now, but once upon a time, Netflix was known for saving shows, or resurrecting them, not canceling them. From Arrested Development, which probably should have stayed at three seasons honestly, to Longmire, to The Killing, they were seen by fans as the premier destination for good shows that needed a new home. It even took a while for them to start pulling the plug on any of their own original shows, but once they did, man, the floodgates were really open. I think the biggest problem is that Netflix's model is almost set up to both maximize cancellations and make those cancellations sting more than many TV shows in the past getting canceled did. And that may sound weird, but I think there's a really solid case to be made here. For one thing, they absolutely take a shoot everything at the wall and see what sticks approach to producing shows. And not for no reason, as we've seen more and more of their non-original content dry up on the platform over the years, as other studios created their own streamers and brought those titles over. So Netflix was put in this position where they felt they had to churn out a lot of stuff and they had to churn it out fast. This seemed to mean that they couldn't put the full strength of their marketing behind a lot of these shows, they were just being spread way too thin. Tons of stuff fell between the cracks, oftentimes not even being able to find on the homepage right after release. So you have a ton of scripted shows coming out, many of them getting very little help or attention, and to add insult to injury, nearly all of them highly, highly serialized. The serialized nature of these shows go hand in hand with the binge model that they pioneered, with their scripted shows usually designed to keep viewers hooked and immediately clicking on that next episode. The episodes themselves, never fully satisfying as standalone pieces of work, was kind of built into the foundation of how they made their shows, which made so many of these cancellations just feel much worse. Let's go back to the adventures of Briscoe County Jr. for a second, Fox's cult classic sci-fi western starring Bruce Campbell. When that got cancelled in 1994, fans were obviously upset, and for good reason, I think that show had tons of potential ahead of it and could have run for years. But it also had plenty of episodes that actually worked really well as self-contained episodes of television. The show had serialized elements, quite a lot of them actually for network TV at the time, but in no way did it live or die by them. When all was said and done, you could still say that there was a lot of fun, satisfying TV to be had there. I don't think you can say the same of, say, 1899, to name one of many recently canned Netflix shows. So many of those give you short 8 episode seasons, oftentimes pretty sluggishly paced, a lot of intriguing buildup, and then a big cliffhanger that will never get resolved. Netflix is filled with shows like this. Sure, a show that was cancelled and ended on a cliffhanger can still be worthwhile, but when that show is built around that mystery box serialized format, it becomes a pretty steep uphill climb. 
it understandably makes viewers feel like they've been tricked, like they've been had by a company that never cared much about the story that they financed in the first place. And instead of going back to those episodes and cherishing them, like many Briscoe County or Firefly fans could, they just never touch it again, feeling like they've been ripped off. And look, if that was just a show here or there, that'd be one thing. But as many Netflix viewers will tell you, that's just kind of the norm. I remember being shocked when the wrestling drama Glow got unrenewed and cancelled right before its final season. But that was years ago, and now I'd be surprised if it made it to three seasons in the first place. Now, many of these shows do have fairly low viewership, but they all add up. I was burned by Glow, you may have been burned by Archive 81, or Warrior Nun, or The OA, or The Society. I mean, really, I could keep listing these for a long time. Honestly, with a lot of shows I love, the ending is not the most important thing. Like, the fact that The X-Files has now botched multiple finales bums me out a little bit, but it doesn't ruin the whole show for me by any means. Not when episodes like Home or Small Potatoes are as entertaining as they ever were. But most Netflix dramas do not work like that. They don't have that sturdy, episodic backbone to build their serialized season stories on. Instead, priding themselves on their 8-hour movie type approach. That puts a ton of pressure on their endings, and kind of necessitates, you know, actually having one. And if you keep cancelling shows that are structured like that, what's the end result? Well, I think it's kind of like building a library and filling it with half-finished books. And it's also a problem that just keeps exacerbating itself. Viewers of a highly serialized show that just got canned are upset by it, making them less likely to check out the next highly serialized show, helping create even more shows with no endings that people feel burned by. An endless cycle of mystery boxes where nothing is ever at the end of the rainbow. It doesn't have to be this way. Netflix doesn't have to let that audience trust erode more and more, while competition from other streamers just gets more intense. In the broad strokes, I think there's a lot of things they could do to change things. For one thing, just make less shows. While I do want there to be more TV production jobs in the world, I don't think barely promoted 8 episode dramas are really helping anyone. HBO is having issues of their own right now, but they built that brand to where it was by focusing on quality over quantity. Become more picky about what you pick up, and with that freed up cash, actually put marketing money behind them all instead of letting them die on the vine a week after release. Have more scripted, episodic shows. I know there's people who just want the serialized binge model all the time, and I'll get to them, but that's not everyone. Make more shows that aren't just one long, unfurling story, and have those dramas that aren't binge dependent. Instead, have some shows release episodes weekly, with clean episodic beginning, middle, and ends that people can return to, even if the show doesn't last all that long. Now, I know they've experimented with the weekly model, but I'd like to see them do it more. But to serve the people that love the binge, that prefer that ultra-serialized style, do a decent number of shows in that format, but take your commitment to those shows seriously. Make less of them, yes, but the ones that you do make, just commit to telling the full story, period. Now some shows like Archive 81 are just not going to take off right out of the gate, but if it at least has a satisfying ending and viewers like it, it will add more value to your catalog over time, instead of its cancellation leaving a bad taste in everyone's mouth on its way out the door. It may actually catch fire later on as more positive word of mouth spreads, instead of creating yet another frustrating dead end. I'm not going to pretend to be any sort of MBA business expert here, but from a television perspective, I think these simple steps could go a long way towards regaining the audience's trust in Netflix's scripted programming. Do you remember like 10 or so years ago when Domino's had that whole advertising campaign that was like half apologizing for their pizza not being that great while also promising that they were turning it around? It kind of worked. Do that for TV dramas. Let people know that they can trust you to finish these mystery box shows that you're asking people to watch, but also that the binge model is far from all that you're doing with scripted TV. Not every show is going to be a Stranger Things or Squid Games level hit, and Netflix seems to have a really hard time accepting that. But I'm hoping that over time, they come to see the value in having shows with complete runs in their catalog instead of a countless number that just kind of sputter out. For a company that has reshaped television so much in the past decade, 
it often feels like they don't value it very much. I think a lot about TV shows, but to be honest, I've never paid much attention to short-form video, even though if you've been on this website much lately, you know that's where YouTube is leaning these days. That's why I'm continuing to learn from the Skillshare class Short Form Video, Create Viral Videos for Instagram Reels and TikTok. In the class, travel photographer Sean Dalton really breaks down where the big production differences are. I'm wrapping up this one now, and it's been a big help. Everyone has a different goal in mind when they join, and none of them are too small. Whether you want to take a class in improving your productivity or learning to code in Python, Skillshare is going to have your back and the possibilities are really endless. Now Skillshare is offering one month free to any of my viewers using the link in the description box, but for the month of April only, they are running an even better offer. If you're ready to start learning today with Skillshare, you can get 40% off your first year using my link. I'm going to leave both links down below so you can choose the best offer for you. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.